Hi, I'm Mike. I'm Fergal. And I'm Noel. And you're watching Linear Rock. So hello everyone, this is Vivian speaking and you're listening to Linear Rock. I'm here today with the Cranberries, so welcome guys to Milan. Thank you very Thank much. You. So Rose is your sixth studio album after 10 years, coming out on the 27th of February. No, you kind of had a vision about the world tour you did in 2010 that eventually led to making this album. And you're the one who started to send the team the new material, right? Yeah, um, I had some uh, rough ideas around 2005, um, early on, and um, they were kind of just basic kind of beds of the songs. So I sent to Dolores a few of those um, over the couple of years there, you know, kind of maybe one or two a year kind of thing. And then um, in 2009, uh, we met Dolores in Dublin briefly at, uh, in Trinity College for an acoustic little set because she was getting uh, an honorary degree up there. Um, and then maybe four or five months later we met again at uh, her son's confirmation and we talked a bit more seriously about maybe doing the Cranberries thing again. Um, I, at that time there was no talk of the album, it was just doing maybe a reunion tour and, and see from there. And, um, and that's, you know, we did that tour, came together very quickly, it went really well and uh, during that tour then as well we continued to write and by the end of the tour um, in early 2011 um, we we had a, a big collection of songs then so the tour finished it felt like the next thing to do for just us as ourselves was to um, go into the studio and see what would happen with an album and uh, we were lucky we weren't there was no record company or management to kind of forcing us to do it it was something the four of us wanted to do and for that reason it became a very relaxed kind of there was no no pressure at all just it was just us doing what we like to do and roses is produced by a long time collaborator of yours steven street who said that his intent was to capture the innocence and the intimacy that was in your first record even in the singing so how did you actually manage to recreate that inward looking atmosphere um there was something that happened kind of naturally really I mean Stephen we know Stephen so well for many years working together and he's always captured that that special cranberry sound which nobody else has managed to capture I think it's the space you know he leaves lots of space for so sounds to kind of swirl around be it a, gu a guitar sound or Dolores's voice or whatever or strings you know I just he just enhances the sound rather than kind of putting too much in you know and um he kind of helped us to get back to that, you know, that feeling of when we first started off of, you know, writing just for ourselves and, and playing songs for ourselves and not thinking about the pressure, the outside pressure of, you know, will it be a, a hit single or anything like that. You know, we weren't thinking about anything like that, it was just for us. I perceive your album to be very positive, very tender in a sort of way. Um, that's also reflected, I think, in the light colors that you use in the artwork. So is, is that correct? Is just my feeling, or you agree with that? Tender, I think, is 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 definitely the right word. It's very, you know, delicate, maybe, you know. Um, yeah, this the, the positivity-wise, I think tomorrow is a very positive song, and um, maybe schizophrenic playboys is, is kind of a you know a tongue-in-cheek light-hearted song but there's some quite dark songs as well like Roses or Fire and Soul or you know Losing My Mind you know so there's kind of a mix of lots of different emotions really. Tell us about your solo project that you did last year in the last years uh, you've been you've experimented more so have you brought those experimentations into the new Cranberry sound? Yeah for sure like I, I think um, it's because of working, all of us having a chance to work with other people, you know, it's created um, a different aspect to the band, to the Cranberries. You know, we we learned, I think, individually how to use the studio more as an instrument than we did before. We used to maybe just go in and we'd, you know, we'd record the album and we'd leave. Whereas now there's little things that are in the background of a lot of this album that we just didn't have the knowledge before to be able to do it. You can do so much now on your laptop. You know, and then, like the trick for us is that we learn 
where the cranberries are that that sound and how to have this other stuff happening without it overpowering the song. You still want to be able to play the song if you strip away all that stuff. And um, definitely, you know, the time off is, the best thing about that time off is that we learned all this other stuff, you know, that was there um, when we were writing these songs and kind of producing them that, you know, we were able to bring tracks into Stephen and he'd go, okay, I'm gonna keep that and this that you've already done. And now you add in, you all play on top of that, you know? And, you know, again, I think it's those little subtleties that, that have given this album a different kind of sound to what we've done before. So even though you've played with many other musicians, however, the only perfect chemistry is, is with you guys, mm -hmm. is among yeah. you. Yeah. I see. Um, the album is full of great songs, so what made you opt for Tomorrow as the very, fir very first single? And then I also wanted to ask you about Roses, that I know it was born almost accidentally, because uh, Steven sent the, the tune almost by accident to Dolores, is that true? Yeah, it was... Um Dolores rang looking for a song, another song that I had sent her, I don't know, I, ages before. So I went through the computer and I was like, oh, this must be it. And I emailed over the, the music part and she rang and said, I never heard this before. This isn't the song that I'm looking for, but um, I love it. I've already written like a melody and lyric to it. She was, um, she said she was at the, going into the cinema with her kids. And she got it on her phone and you know downloaded it and listened to it on her headphones. So she let the kids go in with their dad and she stood outside and kind of penned it really Scribble. quickly and came in the next morning and sang it. You know, and it was it was an accident that because I thought I'd sent it to her ages ago and never heard anything back, but I hadn't and we never did find out which song I was actually <laughs> meant to send. Yeah. But we forgot about that. So um yeah, it, you know Sometimes those things are just meant to be, those happy accidents happen, you know. I know that Dolores said that at a certain point of your popularity, she felt, she, she felt the need to move away from the big spotlight, to become human again. So did that happen to you as well? Did you have that feeling? Well, I just think we, we, we've been burnt out from 13 or 14 years of touring, album, touring, album. And by 2003, none of us were happy and just needed to get away and, and, and just take a break and do something else, I think. And I think it was the best thing we ever did, really, because it, it, it refreshed us and re we recharged our batteries and, you know, we feel revitalised now and it, it's, it's almost, it's better now than it's ever been, to be honest. You know, we're, there's a great chemistry in the band and we're really happy and we don't feel any pressure and we're looking forward to a new tour. Let's talk about the tour, in fact, because, uh, well, first of all, I wanted to ask you, I saw you play in Milan exactly two years ago, in fact, and you were still, still so energetic on stage, so how do you still get all the energy and how do you still keep that um, enthusiasm in your live shows? I think, I think a major factor of it is um, the, the audience, and here in Italy, they, they, we always get a great response. And it kind of you kind of take that in as well, like, and it kind of gets you into it more as well. Like, um, I mean, sometimes you are tired before you go on because you could be out touring six weeks, and but but the minute you get up on the stage, something comes over you, and you just get rightly into it. It's, it's just adrenaline, I think, and you know. So when you get a great reaction, it does help as well. And in fact, in Roses, the second disc you've included is your live in Madrid in 2010. So what made you opt for that very concert among all the others? Um, it's just a really uh, it sounded good, it was a really good concert and it was a great reaction from the crowd so I think it just it's, you know, kind of captured that, that tour of the energy in that tour. And about your upcoming tour, do you have anything special planned, any surprises on stage? Well it'll be some of the older songs, some of the newer songs and it'll change every night, you know, we're not going to just kind of have one set and stick to that for the whole tour because it becomes very monotonous then. So we kind of chop and change and then, you know, we decide like before we go on stage to play certain songs and it just keeps it fresh to have different songs every night. Sure. Okay, well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs>